I want to talk about the wing T, really uh, the T formation more than anything else, because I found it to be really interesting when we're talking about not just historically black football, but innovation in offensive football, right? Because I read Doug Farrar's book about scheme, and I really love talking about scheme. You guys know that I'm an air raid truther, but I also am proficient in basketball on grass. That is spread, Urban Meyer spread, Chad Morris' spread. And I really love that Bob Stoops said, I got Adrian Peterson, forget the air raid, put it back in the I formation, let's go, right? And that's what you usually are seeing from college football coaches. They will scheme to their personnel if they're good. Mike Stoops is not. So knowing that, I pay special attention when Jake Gaither, legendary FAMU coach, innovated his offense, right? Because Gaither recruited speed at every position, at offensive line as well as tailback, because that's what he wanted and that's what he needed, and he coached the backfield on the offense. And he had he literally had dudes with master's degrees as his assistant coaches in, like, 1952. This is at a point when, like, Less than 1% of black folks had master's degrees. All his assistants had master's. Most of them from NYU, Ohio State, and places like northern, uh, or excuse me, Illinois. But in creating his wing tee, he took this approach of, yo, it's called a split line tee, which is an offense that scored nearly 42 points a game in the 50s and 60s, primarily just running the football. And he'd written a book about this with a, like a big city New York publisher because it was that innovative. What he did was set back all his linemen a half step behind the center, and he widened the gaps between them so that the line's width stretched 48 feet. That's like 15 feet more than normal T-formation splits, right? So this design was looks to me like zone blocking, which is to say the defense had, you know, was in a bind. It's like an RPO for the defensive lineman. Because if you went head up, cool. The back is going to beat you to the spot because he's just that fast. All the dudes in the backfield ran sub 10 second 100 yard dashes. And if you played the gaps, well, the blockers had the angle to knock you aside and clear the way for a sweep. What I love most about this is... Gaither would put this formation in front of coaches at his clinic. And at his clinic, Woody Hayes showed up. Sid Gilman showed up. Bear Bryant showed up. The list continues to go on of a who's who of head coaches y'all all all know who went down to Tallahassee back when Florida State was still a women's university to talk football with Jake Gaither, to learn football from Jake Gaither, because between 1950 and 1962, Gaither won eight national championships. And Bear Bryant looked at this formation and said, it won't work. It wouldn't work against big-time college football. To which Gaither said, I tell you what, how about I run my offense against your defense and we find out for sure. Bear Bryant never scheduled a... (laughs) Ah! Paul Bear Bryant did not want to smoke from the fam you rattlers. I love that. You know, Florida did not want the smoke from the fam you rattlers. You know what that reminds me of? No, I don't. What does that remind you? This spread offense won't work in this league because this is a smash mouth league. This is a power league. You can't run the spread here. Oh, man. All right. So Mayberry, Mayberry bringing it on back, right? Bringing it on back. Bringing it on back to our childhood. Saying, yo, uh. You're trying to run, you're trying to run spread in, in, in the Big 12? Is that what you're trying to do? Trying to run spread in the SEC? Is that what you're trying to do? Texas Tech owes its entire, its entire legacy, right, to the air raid. Everything you know and love about Texas Tech football, if you are one of those, is air raid based. And I'm not even talking about Cliff Kingsbury and Mike Leach, though there's much to be said about those, right? Everything you know and love about them. Everything you know and love about modern OU football, you owe to the air raid. Everything. Hell, Nick Saban went down there like Bear Bryant said, nah, 
I don't need to run spread. We run, we run power football. We run murder ball. We, we, we going to run the ball. Then got styled on by Johnny football, right? And continue to get styled on by spread dual threat quarterbacks. You know how I know that they, I can't believe there's still holdouts because Georgia, right? Georgia. Georgia's been good at football. Ain't won no national title since 1980, but, you know, been good at football. Also, ain't really had a, a, a too many dual threat dudes. I mean, we're talking about DJ Shockley, right? We're talking about store brand Cam Newton right now. You know what I mean? Like, we're not, we not really talking about a whole bunch of dudes out there. Meanwhile, the folks that are winning national championships, Cam Newton. Can I get an amen? Jalen Hurts, Tua Tonga Valoa. Can I get an amen? You know what I'm saying? Trevor Lawrence even out there with the scooter. It's just a gimmick, though. It's, it's smoke and mirrors. Look, Mayberry, Mayberry having so much fun with this right now. Because, look, you know why I love spread? I love spread because it's like playing blackjack, to, to use my buddy Jerry's analogy, right? If you can, if you can do math, you're going to win more often than you lose. And that's the same reason I love the air rate, but that's also why I like offensive football in that, no, if I'm good at this, all I got to do is count. And that's the, that is, when you're looking at Lincoln Riley's offense, when you're looking at how simple it can be, what he's really doing is flooding one part of the field with more bodies with OU on them than you have. That goes with the GT counter. That goes with flood formations. That goes with four verticals. Wherever we have not just a matchup, but we have an abundance of people, that's where we're going to go with the football. And if you want to stack up against the run, fine. We will throw it to a wide receiver. If you want to back off and play dime, cool. We will hand the ball to tailbacks. Now, what I find most interesting about 1950s, 1960s football is that while they threw the ball, they didn't really throw the ball. We talk about big-time seasons being 2,000-yard passes. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they weren't, like, airing it out like that. Even Johnny Unitas wasn't airing it out like that. By the way, how the hell come people keep throwing up Fran Tarkenton as one of the best, you know, dual-threat quarterbacks in existence, and yet all the black quarterbacks had to play something different when they got to the NFL? I don't understand. I don't understand. I mean, I know, I know Marlon Briscoe, right? And I know since then everybody talked about Mike Vick. And I get to talk about Colin Kaepernick out in public again. Oh, yeah, that, that segment is coming. I'm working on that one. Like, But, yo, we talk about Lamar Jackson. And people talking about that wouldn't work because Greg Roman's offense is gimmicky. Yo, man, he put a 512 yards offense on Tennessee in the playoffs. And they had built their entire world on being defensive world beaters. And that man got everything he wanted. Matter of fact, if the defense could have stopped somebody, namely Derrick Henry, my God, is that dude, 250, just trucking. Then maybe they playing in the AFC Championship game, in the game that everybody actually wanted, which was Lamar versus Patrick Mahomes. Oh, yeah, there's another dude running air raid concepts and gimmicky offenses. And would they win the friggin' Super Bowl? Do people remember when Tom Brady went straight air raid to win a Super Bowl? Because I do. Yep. I totally remember that stuff. Yo, yo, you know what else we remember? We remember Gus Malzahn going, no, we're going to chuck it. We're going to power run it, and we're going to chuck it. That's not going to work. That's like two plays. That's like two plays and three routes. So, watch. Tarion, run the ball. They're going to stop him. Brennan, go deep. <laughs> the best football plays in existence are also some of the simplest football plays in existence. Hey, man, it's an Occam's Razor situation. You're right. The best football plays are the simplest. The, sh the quickest way to get between two points is a straight friggin' line. Okay? And at, this is why Jimmy Johnson is always going to be correct and always going to be right. If I have better football players than you do, it don't matter what I'm running. I know, I know high school coaches that refer to the power. Just the power. The power. Because, because the power is... I know, and they refer to it as God's play. It is God's play. It's because it's, it's, it's simple, and it's also one of the most effective plays in existence. You go, all right, so my only issue with, with run plays, right, is you got to know how to coach offensive line, and that is a glaring weakness for me, right? Like, I, I know how to kind of coach offensive line, but it ain't what I do, right? I'm over here in scale. You know, I'm over here in, in coverages. When we go, in, when we go defense, I'm over here with the secondary, right? I can, I can help you with the linebackers. Don't ask me to help you with defensive line. I'm just going to tell them to kill people. That's all I'm going to do. 
offensive line, I'm basically going to be like, yo, uh, do the thing that clears the way for my backs to run, right? No disrespect. I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to get an offensive line coach. I'll put something together. But God's play for me, four verts. Four, four, four verts. That's it. Four verts. Basic pass blocking. I know, I know big men don't necessarily get on with the with the pass blocking. I understand, but you I'm I'm quarterback here, man. Nah, four verts. Give me the tight end in the seam, split the cover two. That's all I'm saying. Right? Because I want speed. I want demon speed. Speed's what we need. I'm gonna be over here while y'all over here running like like guard tackle counter drills and whatnot. We're gonna be chasing chickens. That's what we're gonna be doing. I'm going to drop the rooster in. I'm going to go catch this rooster. Go ahead. Yeah, then, I mean, then you can play wide receiver for me. How about that? You brought up Texas Tech, and one of the things that makes that offense so so tough to stop, and it's, or I guess not, it's a different offense now, but under Leach and, and that tree was the fact that it was simplified. It was just option routes. Yes. Run route but, A, but, run route B. But, Safety does this, we run this. Math. Math. See thing, do thing, right? What was it? What was it? See it before you do it. You see it, you do it. That was my favorite coaching point ever that was ever. See it before you do it. You see it, you do it. See what you hit, hit what you see. You know? Football, as I, like we make football complicated because we want to we want to feel smart, right? Right. We want to feel smart. But as I, I tell people, no, 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 no. Physicists are smart. You know what I mean? Like rocket scientists, they're smart. Doctors are smart. Lawyers are evil. But <laughs> football is easy. Football is rote. Football is doing something over and over and over and over and over again until he's breathing, which is like many things, right? That's one of the things I love about skill versus talent. Talent is being six foot six, 250. Skill is learning to throw a football. Skill is learning to execute your technique. These are all things you can learn. You can maximize your talent, right? Talent does not maximize skill. No, you have to learn a skill. You have to be dedicated to a skill, right? That's one of the things I've always loved about coaching as well because there is no, there is no talent in coaching. Like there's intuition, but that's not talent, right? Intuition comes from experience. Intuition comes from a million times doing the same thing and just having a sense of how this usually goes and picking the best option, right? That's what people try to be like, nah, he's, he's, intu- he's intuitive. He can see it. No, he's been doing this for a million years. Right. You know, but also on the other hand, you're not going to be too good at doing some other stuff when you've been devoting your stuff to doing this thing that you only do, right? right. So like, yeah, man, uh, Trying to think, what, is, what can I do? Oh, yeah, don't ask me to go skiing. How about that? Don't ask me to go skiing. I don't, I don't ski. Now, now, water ski, not, 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 snow ski, not, none of that. My knees turned to jelly just thinking about skiing. Nah, man, like, all right. See, people be talking about getting out of the comfort zones right now. And, I, and you know, people, like, I, I had this conversation with another dude, another sports talk show host um, out of the state. But we were just talking about what's going on culturally. And politically, and he was going, "Yo, man, how do I, how do I make myself more vulnerable with my with my quote unquote black friends?" Right. By the way, retire. I have black friends is a point of validity. It's just <laughs> you, you look like you're wearing kente cloth in, 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 out in public. Don't do that. But I said, "Yo, hey, look, when I when I go to a golf course, I'll always feel like you know, it ain't about what people look like. It's that I don't know what I'm doing." You know, and I got to trust the people in the room to take care of me, put me where I'm supposed to go, you know, all of that. You're going to have to do that. That's being out of the comfort zone, you know? I think football can do that, but I think football is also a place where we can all take care of each other and way spread the gospel of football. I hate football elitists. I hate them. I really, really hate them. I used to dunk on one. They used to come on this show. 